In this video, we'll be learning about variables. Let's get started. We first need to create a new project. So let's go ahead and go to Spotlight. And we can type in Xcode and open up Xcode. If it's on your dock, feel free to open it from there as well. And we're going to select Create a New Xcode Project. And we're going to make sure we choose iOS Application and Single View Application. And we can press Next. And I'm going to go ahead and give it the product name Funky Unit Converter. And I'm going to go ahead and leave my organization name as Code Coalition. You can leave this blank if you don't have one. You do need a company identifier. Feel free to use self.edu.yourname if you don't have your own uh, URL. And as a class prefix, I'm going to use CC. Again, you guys can use your initials. Um, just make sure they're all in capitals. And this just provides a unique identifier for any files that we create. This ensures that we won't have any clashes with Apple created classes. We're also going to make our device for the iPhone. And we can go ahead and press Next. And we are going to choose the option Create Git Repository on Mac. And we can press Create. And we're going to go ahead in our folder navigator on the far left hand side to go to ccviewcontrol.m and we're going to be writing all of our code inside of the viewDidLoad method. viewDidLoad is a method name and everything inside the curly braces will be evaluated when our view loads. Methods allow us to package information together. So when the viewDidLoad method is called, everything inside the curly braces occurs in the order of the statements inside of them. The same principle can be applied to the method named didReceiveMemoryWarning. Every time the did receive memory warning method is called, the items inside the curly brace evaluates. However, we're not going to write our code inside of the method did receive memory warning because we're not going to have any, any memory issues in our tutorial together. Later on, if you use too much memory, you'll receive a warning and it'll tell you like, hey, if you're using too many objects, you're using too much RAM on your device, and this application is in danger of crashing. Uh, but our view did load method will evaluate because it loads every time our view appears on the screen when we run our application. Our method names in Objective-C are very readable. We'll talk more about method names later, but for now we're going to talk about integers, which are values that hold whole numbers. Examples of this are 0, 29, and negative 100,000. Let's get started writing our first integer. We're going to write our line of code below this green line of code which is actually a comment which actually has no effect on our program. So it actually isn't code at all. What we're going to do though is explain comments in our next video together so you'll get a better understanding of what's going on with them then. For now, let's go ahead and write int x and add a semicolon at the end. We use semicolons to finish all statements in Objective-C. A statement is a single line of code. Here, the type of the variable is an integer, and we use int, or the keyword int for short, and we give it a variable name, which is x. On the next line, we can reference the variable that we just created, and we said it was an integer. So we can do, we can assign it a value using the assignment operator, which is our equal sign, and give it an integer value, which is 5 in this case. Whenever x is referenced again, assuming we don't assign a new value to x, its value will be equal to 5. We can also say that x stores the value of 5 from now on. Now let's check out the type of float. Floats are numbers with decimals. So let's go ahead and create our float and we can write float and we used x which was a single character as our variable name but our variable names can be a lot longer and have multiple characters or letters. So let's go ahead and create a more descriptive variable name. So let's just say this is the height of Everest Base Camp. And we can set its value equal to 16,900.3. And we notice that this number has a decimal. And this agrees with the type. It's a float which allows us to pass in or set it equal to values with decimals or numbers with decimals. Why not always use a float then, you might ask? Well, sometimes you want your variable to be able to hold an integer value and only an integer value because that's all that makes sense. For example, a variable 
named number of cosmos episodes would not make sense if it was a decimal value because we can't have part of a cosmos episode. Furthermore, floats take more memory than integers and therefore are more efficient. However, nowadays, this is really not something you should be concerned with, especially since our early computer programs are going to be really simple. The processing power it takes to load one image dwarfs any gain on using ints rather than floats. We use variables to keep track of information. Whenever we need the height of our Everest Base Camp, we can simply use the variable name height of Everest Base Camp and we'll get the value of 16,900.3 back.